Hello, Dr. Salinas. Hi, and, Dr. Tony. Uh, you know, you uh, have a lot of experience at uh, Hope for Cancer, uh, working with patients on a daily basis, seeing them come uh, compromised with uh, their health. And uh, Shibuto, uh, having two PhDs, one in agricultural chemicals and the second one on medicinal chemistry, knowing the impact of chemicals on the body. To that end, let's discuss one of our key principles at Hope for Cancer, which is the immune modulation. Uh, when we speak about the immune system, we want to look at both uh, branches of the immune system, and we want to balance the immune system, not an immune system that's too active or inactive or, or hypoactive, right? right. So uh, let's discuss, Shibuto, a bit um, about the innate immune system, which is the quick-acting immune system, and then jump in, Dr. Uh, Salinas, talking about the adaptive, or more the long-term immune system. Well, innate Im immune systems are really the superheroes of our body. You know, you can think about the Flash or the or Batman or whatever, you know, running to rescue us, whether it's from a pathogen or from anything else. Now, for most diseases, there seems to be like a black and white wall that divides disease and health. And um, so, for example, you know, you get a, a, a fever, a bacterial infection, uh, you know, there's very clear demarcation between you being sick and not being sick. Um, in the case of cancer and other chronic diseases, that whole thing becomes a bit of a continuum. And the innate immune system, though, is still extremely important there, too. Uh, innate immune system are the first responders of the body. Whenever they sense an external organism like a pathogen or even a cancer cell, their goal is to respond. But then their goal is to go ahead and activate the adaptive immune system, right, Dr. Salinas? Which is a little bit more like a, a more targeted or more um, um, a smarter um, um, reaction, meaning that it's not just let's attack, you know, it's more against uh, something specific. It's like a log and a, and a key, for example, and it has two branches also. It has the cellular and the humoral part, which is cells and uh, proteins or antibodies. Yeah, we see every day how this immuno compromised patients that have cancer, of course, and maybe have had tough therapies, you know, at home prior to coming. Uh, most likely they're battling with urinary tract infections or infections in the lesions of the tumors uh, that are open. And so, if anything, uh, upregulating the immune system to have these infections go away will enable the God-given immune system to target the cancer as it's supposed to do and not be distracted by trying to control the infection. Yes. Uh, that's something important because we've seen that, uh, let's say if this uh, table was the, the area where we have cancer cells there, we see a flow of the white blood cells towards the cancer cells, but as, as soon as we put bacteria or viruses or parasites on the table, they will kind of leave alone the cancer cells and try to attack these first. So it's very important uh, 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 that we get rid of all those infections also. And in this terrain, right, what decreases the immune status is toxins, negative thoughts, uh, things like glyphosate, right, that are in our food, in our air, in our soil, in our water. Um, and so we need to clean that terrain. This is where all of our principles, the key principles to cancer therapy, have synergistic effects. Uh, one of the key more ones that I would add to your list is nutrition because that is what really helps the body, uh, the immune system build itself. It needs those key components that we are eating every day to keep itself in that healthy state. Given the, given the body the resources it needs to heal, right? And uh, let's talk a little bit about specific therapies that we have at Hope for Cancer that upregulate the immune response and uh, uh, one of them that we have been doing for a number of years is the sonophotodynamic therapy, and more recently, the photodynamic therapy plus, where we're using different wavelengths of light. We're using red light, green light, blue light, and the different benefits of those. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience with patients with uh, photodynamic therapy plus, Dr. Salinas, any side effects, uh, how they tolerate this therapy. 
Uh, the photodynamic therapy is very well tolerated. Um, we need to be careful with the IV sensitizers now with exposure to sunlight, for example, because our patients can get a little bit of rash, especially if you know, they're in Cancun and they go to the beach. Um, but it's well tolerated. They may feel a little bit of tingling or a little bit of warmth in the uh, area where the IV is going in. But uh, besides that, they, they tolerate it really good. So sunlight is a photodynamic therapy, too, right? That is very good for plants. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, the sun of photodynamic therapy, Shibuta, with wheat, uh, written about so often and a lot of patient experiences with it. Yes, for sure. And sun of photodynamic therapy, just to elaborate on what Dr. Selena was saying, you know, we use uh, something called a photosensitizer, which is also a sonosensitizer. They both can be, get impacted by specific wavelengths of light or sound. And um, once they get activated, they release um, what we call reactive oxygen species, which are high energy particles that kill a cancer cell. And since these get absorbed specifically in cancer cells, they leave the healthy cells alone. So it's really a targeted approach to get to those cancer cells. But the, this, this particular therapy has got an immune implication that is extremely important because the moment these cells die, they send signals to recruit the immune system. So the innate immune system gets activated, the macrophages start, start gravitating towards uh, the areas of the tumor, and that's when we start having a, a much larger impact on the cancer than the therapy could have accomplished by itself. You mentioned a key component of the immune system, which are the macrophages. And macrophages are practically in every cell and tissue of the body. They're like sleeping policemen until they're called into action and then they do what they're supposed to do. The SUNY Vera program at Hope for Cancer targets this uh, immune cell called macrophages. Uh, Dr. Salinas, uh, you have extensive experience with the SUNY Vera, which is composed of six components. Uh, let's describe the effect of the macrophages and Shibuta, then we can go over the components of the SUNY Vera program and bring this together. Well, with the, with the SUNY Vera protocol, we, we give our patients a, a molecule that it's an activating factor specifically for macrophages. So basically what we do is we uh, awaken them to start you know, looking for different um, antigens or, or uh, foreign bodies in, in, in our organism to attack them basically. And you know, being the, the biggest cell uh, in the immune system and being able to phagocyte or eat the, the cancer cells in this, in this uh, specific uh, subject, they are very effective in being like the first part of a domino effect of uh, creating an immune reaction. Okay. And for that, uh, how important is one of the components of the SUNY Vera program, the vitamin D? Absolutely. The, uh, the key, key aspect of SUNY Vera is the use of multiple therapies at the same time uh, in integration with the seven key principles again. Uh, propolis, for example, is, comes from bee pollen, and that is a fantastic product to activate the immune system. Vitamin D is an essential part of this treatment as well, as we all know. Pretty much everybody in this world nowadays is deficient in vitamin D, and we all need supplementation on that. But this is particularly more the case for cancer patients as well. In that aspect, Shibuta, if I could interrupt for a moment, uh, we need to understand that the considered normal levels of vitamin D by lab are way below what we want our patients to have. So uh, preferably anywhere between 80 milligrams per deciliter to 100 is ideal of vitamin D levels in blood. If a patient is above 100, all the better, right? So uh, vitamin D and adequate numbers of, um, of vitamin D uh, stores in the body is, is important. Absolutely. In fact, I was doing an analysis of nutrients through a little program and it was putting in all the food that we eat and some of the vitamin D levels never go anywhere close to our daily requirement. So we just don't get enough vitamin D from our foods. We're not getting enough vitamin D for some sunlight. Sometimes we get so much sunlight that we'll get cancer, but we won't get vitamin D. Right? And I would like to mention the Arsoda, which is the autologous antigen receptor specific oncogenic tumor acquisition uh, immunotherapy program. And uh, to uh, give this to a patient, we know it's safe, 
because it's from your own body, autologous. We're isolating the antigens or proteins that come from the tumor cells, and we are uh, extracting them from the urine, and then we send this to a specialized lab. When we give, get the finished product back from the lab, we get uh, vials that are going to be administered intramuscularly. Uh, initially, we start with a lower volume of this uh, immunotherapy program so that we can prep the immune system, and then we increase the, the, the concentration on a weekly basis, that way awakening that innate and adaptive immune system so that uh, we could have what we call an antigen antibody response. Uh, simply put, so that the antibody surveillance cells can recognize those uh, cancer cells uh, more readily and mount an immune attack. Uh, in addition to the Arsoda, we have the Helixor mm -hmm. uh, therapy. Well, with the Helixor therapy, um, something that I like a lot of it is that we give our patients the dose until we see a, a specific response, a little bit of fever, uh, meaning that we know that we're giving our patients the right dosage, the dosage that they need. And you know, by seeing that effect, is, we're demonstrating that we're actually activating the immune system. And besides activating the immune system, you know, the concentration of viscotoxins uh, that it has that are uh, cytotoxic or are specifically to kill cancer cells. So we have you know, we're, we're getting two birds with, the, with one rock there. The key principle of immune modulation brings the seven key principles together because they're all working in synergy with each other. And this was a wonderful discussion how we can regenerate that immune system that God gave us and it knows what to do, but with uh, all the stressors in life, uh, toxin in our environment and antibiotics and uh, aggressive uh, therapies that destroy our gut health, we're having a suppressed immune system and cancer patients are making, making it more difficult for themselves to, to recover and to have that optimal immune system that'll give them a more favorable outcome. So thank you, Dr. Salinas, and Welcome. thank you, Dr. Chiberto.